Hello, and thank you for joining me. You're here with data science teacher Brandon, and we're going to go over the 3D scatter plot in Plotly. I, I just, this was such a cool plot. I was so excited about using it the first time just because it's super cool. And you can see here, so we'll go through the syntax. So PX, I imported plotly.express as PX. Scatter underscore 3D gives me the 3D plot. I'll give it the data frame in the first position. And then I'll be able to select Y and X, the column names from my data frame, Y, X, and Z, so we have three dimensions. This is a 3D scatter plot. Okay, and then I set width and height, and then the margin diff is the next thing. I set those up at the top. I set those for my whole workflow. The way that you control the sizing and spacing of your plot is different than in Matplotlib because Seaborn and Pandas are based on top of Matplotlib, so they work all kind of the same way. It's not hard in Matplotlib, but it's it's different because it's not built on top of Matplotlib, so it has some kind of syntax to it. So the width and height are these two variables, 700 and 8, 700 and 400. And then I set the margin dictionary of margins, so top, left, right, bottom, just to get, because if you don't have this, I find that the spacing, there's really just lots of white space uh, with this. So I usually use this to kind of, just there's not so much white space, kind of keep it a little bit cleaner. Okay. So we're doing that. And so you can see I give width equal to the width variable that I set, so that's 700 and height equal to 400, it's up above. And I just use those kind of as I was with my whole workflow or for my whole uh, analysis. Okay, and then I'll use the margin dick as well. So I'm not always doing this one, I have set up above if I'm gonna do more than one plot in plotly. Okay, and then I set my title as well. So this is, so after I make my figure, so px.scatter, I make a figure object and I had height and width in the initial call of px.scatterplot. It'll go fig dot update underscore layout. And this is a pretty common argument that you use the update layout function that you'll use on Plotly. So update the margin dictionary to kind of control the white spacing on the outside. I'll put the title right here. And then title X and underscore title, title underscore X, title underscore Y controls the positioning of, of this. So X is left and right. So 0.5 is right in the middle and Y is from top to bottom. So you can put it right in the middle of your plot if you wanted to, which is fun, I guess. I haven't really found a purpose for that though, but you have the flexibility. So here we have our 3D scatter plot and it looks pretty cool. You can see there's a lot of data, so it's kind of hard to see exactly where it is, but this is really cool that you can kind of go inside your data and really get a sense. So really something that we couldn't see back here is where a lot of the data is. But as you scroll in, you can see that there's a lot more down over here in this section that might be interesting to go down and explore a little bit and know a little bit more detail and really get an understanding for that data a little bit. So it has amazed me that I feel that I can get an extra level of insights from the 3D scatter plot. So then going into the next one here, uh, we have the 3D scatter plot. And I'm going to set this time the color equals to the year bins. This is just saying I have years category for my, my year 10, 2010 to 2013, 2014 to 2015, 2018 to 2021. Okay, so there's three categories. So I'm setting color to a category column. And then just like the hue argument in C where it's going to change the colors. Okay, so we can start to get a better sense for the data here. And really, this actually really helped me out. I think this is really kind of valuable. So you can see here only one year is over to the left. And all that kind of gave you, I wasn't able to really see, you wouldn't really be able to see this in any way, even in a bivariate plot. So really what I just now realized is that with this, the scale is different just for these values because really it shouldn't really be any different. So what I did is I just moved the scale for whatever reason, these years were divided by a hundred. So I create a little function and use it with dot apply to basically when it's equal to this category, it's going to be 100 better. So we're not talking about Python today, so I won't go into too much detail about using dot apply, but very important function if you're not aware of it. And so what we're going to do here is now, but that's just like the fact that it's just this one category that's scaled differently. I, I, just, I don't know if I would have been able to see that in any other way. This is kind of this value that you get by just kind of going inside the data, getting this perspective from all angles. Really, it is just different for whatever reason for all sides. And it's just clearly different. It shouldn't really be so different. Okay. So we can do the year bin and getting a sense here of the real data. So now that I've scaled it, 
you can see now the data it all seems like it's better now we can really go inside of it and start to explore it and just have the kind of fun with our cool plots so we can change some things now that now that we've done you know figured out the analysis and fix my data um getting back into the plotly section so uh we can do size equals production so we're going to change the size of our our circles by the production by a continuous variable and it's a good idea to set the size max and then what you do is everything's going to be smaller based on this. If you made this bigger, your biggest one would be bigger, and then everything will be based on this. This is kind of what you control the overall size of your, how big they will grow to, and then how small the smallest one will be. And that will depend on the range of your data. Okay, so you can see here we get a nice size, and you start to really see, it looks really cool actually getting all these little small ones down here. And then you can see here, as production gets bigger, sorry, as the, the size production gets bigger, all of these other variables seem to kind of go up. Well, I shouldn't say all of them, because as the average scale price, you can see as this gets bigger, the size doesn't really seem to increase. And there's a couple of little spots that are a little bit tiny bigger. But really what we're seeing the notice is as stocks go up, the production seems to go up as well. So there's more of a relation there, but you can see that as the really even going to the left here, these are all smaller dots, a little bit or a couple of bigger ones over here, but not so bigger but they all stay small. And so really the only thing that's having a relationship with production is stocks. And that is another really interesting value that I don't think I would have been able to find out in any other way. Okay, so now that we've learned to control the size, we can also change the symbol. This is getting to be a little bit too much, but it might be controlled in certain ways using either the symbol or the color. Using them together is a little bit tricky. Um, it might be good if you use both the same variable for each one so they're a little bit more colors and shapes are different it looks cool i would say it's almost unnecessary to change the symbols in this situation but i'm sure you can find a, a reason to use them but it does look pretty cool when you can kind of see this and really helping that the shapes and colors are different really just adds more texture that these are really different uh anyways so thank you so much for joining me today and i hope you have fun with the 3d scatter i will see you next time